Hello everybody and welcome back. Last time we obtained a second team bit as well as a few medals and we learned that there's apparently a ghost that has been stealing meta parts in Mount Odoro. And that is what we will be investigating today. So let's get to it, shall we? So let's talk to this kid right here. What is that thing taking a nap in a tree? So he's talking about this tree in particular, but I guess we'll get to that in a moment. Here we have a new fight, and as you can see here, we, we get a prompt if we want to use our Robo Robo Metal. I'm not going to do that because we do have a new Meta Bot, so for now we'll just say no. Alright, so this fight. It is more of an upgraded version of a previous opponent since we have already fought Kintaro, so as for tactic, not really much to add, just either missile and then some machine gun with Meta B and then... Pippo Hammer or Scout with Rokusha. Of course, if you want, you can also use a Metaforce, but I think I'm just going to stick with Chain Gun. As for the new enemy, we have the first Metabot so far with a medical degree. We have Dr. Bokchoy. So, similar to Jorat, this is a purely Scout bot, meaning that all it does really is use the Scout skill. It has a fairly decent armor values all around, and it has the wheels leg, meaning that it would get a bonus if we were to be fighting inside in a city or room field. So it is in that regard it is similar to tanker. Aside from that, not much else to say. If you're looking for a scout bot and you want higher armor values, then you might want to get uh, the Dr. Bok Choice set. And I guess if I were to recommend any parts, um, it's a bit hard to say, I guess either the head or any of the arms really. The legs won't give you any specific bonus in these areas, since we have a different terrain. So yeah, not really much else to add. So I'm not getting any parts on Kintaro here, so I'm going to just charge the metaphors. Hopefully an Octobat can actually yeah, deal some damage on Kintaro. Decent damage, nice critical. Alright, can we target... Alright, let's do it. Come on, Metabee. Yes, perfect. Alright, hopefully we got some parts for Dr. Pogchon. See, no, we didn't. Well, at least we got uh, the Kindalex, so I guess that's fine. So, anyway, as I was saying, this tree right here there's something in the tree. If I kick it, maybe it'll fall out. Stop that! What happens if a caterpillar or something falls out? I really want to know what's up there. Should I give it a kick? Let's do it. What the heck? The ground and sky have switched! So yeah, he was a member of the Rubber Rogue Gang. Uh, gang. Alright, as for tactics here. Well, first off, it's a 2 on 1, so we have the number advantage. But if you're playing the Metabi version, I would say just stick with Missile. And if you're playing Rokusho, use Scout and then Pippo Hammer. I'll explain why in a moment. As for Noctobat, I'll just simply use Psycho Missile on the uh, any part. As for the enemy, we have Magdo Snake. So, this enemy, its head as well as both arms have the same skill, movement, which we actually discussed last time. In this case, it, it is the virus variant, meaning that it is a an attack that deals minor damage, but it will reduce an enemy rate of success and evasion. And it can be rather annoying, that is why I recommend that you use Missile, because even if it inflicts virus on you, Missile will not miss. And as for Rokusha, that's why I recommended that you use Scout. Aside from that, it has a new type of legs, the multi-legs. They get a bonus from fighting in rocky field and valley fields, which is pretty much the ones that were here right now. 
And yeah, if I were to recommend a part, I guess it would be the snake bite or the legs. And you may have just seen that Noctobat apparently missed its attack. And that is actually a drop, a, a disadvantage that uh, long range attacks have. Since they do tend to show you what part they're aiming for, if that part happens to, be, happens to be destroyed before you take action, either because an enemy triggers a trap and takes damage or because one of your allies happens to destroy it, then your action is negated. You don't just suddenly attack a different part, you have to go back to your corner and select a new action. So in that regard, close range attacks have an advantage. But yeah, not... yeah, and yet again we have the same problem. Alright. Hopefully... I think it's going to happen yet again because Missile will most likely destroy the legs and then Noctobat... I think he was aiming for the legs or maybe the head, we'll see. It's actually doing decent damage now that I look at it. Alright. 17, hopefully Noctobat can... Destroy it and we level up shoot, nice. Not enough. Alright, let's use our final missile. And that should do it. Nicely done. Octobot has decent elevation, so... It does tend to avoid attacks, luckily. There we go. Okay, let's see what we got. We got Changer. It's fine, it's not the one that I would have preferred, but it's fine. And we got a Rubber Opperman. I can't sleep very well here. Those rubber robots are everywhere. Alright, let's continue on. Give me back my Metabot! Alright, so this kid here. It is a scripted battle, you cannot avoid it. And it's actually a rather special one, believe it or not. And I'll explain why in a moment. So, tactics. Uh, in this case I'm only going to talk about the Meta V version because this kid right here will have a different Metabot depending on which version you're playing. So as soon as we're done with the, with the fight here I'll just switch over to the Rokusho version. So tactics, I guess. For this one I'm just going to mostly charge Metaforce with Meta V and then just attack with Noctobat. As for the enemy, we have Toy Box. So it's head apart, it has the gravity skill, in this case it takes the form of Break. As for the arms, first off we have Blast Rod, it has the Bind skill with the Hold Status Ailment, which will slow down enemy movement and its duration tends to vary. And since it is a Berserk, it has Chain Damage. And then it has Yo-Yo, it is of the Interrupt attribute, in this case the skill is Regenerate and it takes the form of Force Drain. It will steal metaphors from an enemy and then add it up to itself, so it can be a rather useful ability. In this case, I don't think you will actually end up using it, but it can be useful. Aside from that, it has the wheel leg type, meaning that it would get an advantage if we were fighting in a uh, city or room field, which doesn't happen to be the case. But yeah, it is a rather interesting metabot because it is the first metabot that has a variety of functions at least three different functions all in one, so kinda cool. If you're interested in it, it will become a random enemy much later in the game, so you will get a chance to get a full set. Aside from that, not much to add, if I were to recommend that part, I guess I would say either Blast Frog or Yo-Yo, because we already have access to a few gravity, gravity head parts, so... Alright Metabi, let's see if we can take him out. Maybe, I don't know. No. But it's almost there. I think just either one missile attack from Metavi and we should be done. 
unless he targets the head. Nicely done, Nagdabat. Alright, let's see what we got. We got the yo-yo, but it's fine. I lost my meta parts to the Robo Robos. The Robo Robos? Are they connected to the ghost? Still, those guys are like cockroaches. They're everywhere! Alright, so as I mentioned previously, I will... let's just go ahead and switch over to the Rokusho version and fight the other metabot that this kid has. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright, welcome back. So here we have Rokusho and this monstrosity that I have created. I gave it the Kappa Metal because I'm waiting until we actually get some anti-C parts, but for now, this is what we have on hand. So, the enemy here. As for tactics, well, I would say focus on using the metaphors with Rokushu. And with your second metabot, mm, well, it depends on what you have on it, of course, but be careful about just directly attacking the enemy, and I'll explain why in a moment. But for now, let's actually try for the, uh, the snipe rifle. So, the enemy here, Starpeda. So, first off, I stand corrected about what I said regarding the monkey medal. There is actually one part that will get a the compatibility bonus from the medal and will actually be able to take advantage of it. And that part is the Snar Starnet arm. It has the impair ability, making it so one of the enemy's parts is useless for the, remain for the remainder of the battle. Aside from that, it has the sword attack with the head, which is always funny. And then it has the counter ability with the shield. That's what I was talking about when saying that you may want to be careful. And that is also why you may want to just rely on the metaphors. Because just as the metaphors uh, ignores traps, it also ignores counters. Alright, so we miss, but we might as well keep trying. Maybe we'll get lucky and actually land a hit. Aside from that, it also has a new type of legs. Sea legs, so they are better when fighting in shore and underwater fields. We still haven't encountered any of these particular fields, but we will soon enough. And just as it happened with Toy Box, this enemy will become a random fight much later on, so you will get a chance to collect it. Aside from that, not really much else to say about uh, Star Pen. It has a cool design, I'll say, I'll say that much. But nothing else to, to really add. Alright, Rokusho, let's see how much damage we can deal here. Yeah, not enough. But one more should take him out. Impair. Not, that's okay. It doesn't matter. We cannot use. We cannot use sword, which changes nothing. And there we have the counter. You never know when he just might spring up the counter stance, so that's why you have to be really careful when attacking him. And let's see if we actually get to see the counter effect. And it actually missed! I can't believe it. So yeah, sometimes, even if, the, if you are shown that the enemy got hit, it's entirely possible for the counter to miss, and I can't believe that it actually happened here. Alright, this is a victory for us. Alright, let's see what we got. The starfish legs, that's actually rather useful. And we already saw this particular line of dialogue. So usually at this point I would just switch over to the Meta V version, but actually I want to stick with the Rokusho version for now. 
Other pond, water, water taxi stop. Holy man, really? One ride for one dollar, Robo Robo. You're one of the Robo Robo gang? What are you talking about? You're mistaken, man. All I did was pick up the phrase. The Robo Robo gang? Here? My new nose tells me a scoop is here. You gonna ride or not? Hurry up and decide. But, I can only give one person a ride, buddy. We got no choice, I guess. Iggy, I'll pay for you, so take a ride over there. If there's anything worth checking out, I'll come over afterwards. Alright, and we have a bunch of chests. Let's see what we have. We have nothing. Sasuke of the Three Ninja Brothers arrives like wind. Oops. Ninja has used wrong exit. Ninja banish. So, if we actually inspect the chest one more time, we got the Queen Medal. So, similar to what happened with the Snake and Tortoise Medal, whichever version you're playing will give you a different medal. Let's go over the Queen Medal first. So, the Queen Medal. It has affinity for the stop skill, so it is actually a fairly useful medal for Peppercat. It will aim for heal parts and it has a compatibility of plus 7. As for attributes, it starts with high strike and berserk, and mid values in shoot and aim shot, and zero in everything else. As for the metaforces, the first one is called stop. It requires 50 out of 80 metaphors. It is of the strike attribute and it will inflict the stop status on all enemies, so rather useful. Up next, we have Cancel Stop. It requires 60 out of 80 metaphors. It is of the Berserk attribute and it prevents all allies and the caster from being affected by the stop status. And then finally, we have Propulsion Up. It requires half a metaphors gauge. It is of the Aim Shot attribute and it increases propulsion for all leg parts. Alright, on to the medal for the Meta B version, the Jellyfish medal. It has affinity for the Bomb skill. It will also aim for heal parts and it has a compatibility of plus 7. As for attributes, it starts with high aim shot and low shoot, support and heal, and then zero in everything else. As for metaphors, the first one is called bomb form. It requires half a metaphors gauge and it is of the shoot attribute. And it will turn all meta parts skills into bomb, granting them 100% hit rate and chain reaction damage. If that sounds familiar, that is because the Missile and Napalm, which we haven't seen yet, abilities, are bomb, uh, are related to the bomb skill. Except for Meta Beast's head part, that is the only case in which an ability that should be bomb is actually shoot. But it is there because otherwise you would not be getting the compatibility for Meta Beast's missile head. Anyways, moving on. The next one is called Absorb Bomb. It requires 70 out of 80 metaphors and it is of the aim shot attribute. And it makes it so all bomb attacks are all bomb attacks that you receive are absorbed, therefore healing you. And then finally we have remoteness up. It requires half a metaphors gauge, it is of the support attribute, and it increases remoteness for all allies leg parts. So yeah, fairly decent medals. Let's get back to the chests here. We got the head part, Psycho Missile. If you don't remember, that's actually Noctobat's head part. And we got a dollar. Alright, and we also got a random fight against an enemy that I already fought, so I'll just skip this and I'll see you guys in a moment. Welcome back! And we got Cat Raider, that's actually rather nice. And our Kappa Metal level up. Let's head back to Erika for now. Did you finish up? Yes. I'll take you back. How was it, Iki? Nothing worth mentioning, aside from the ninja, I guess. I'm disappointed. Get out of the way. Before I leave for the next area. Here we go. Ta-da! Well, I'm off to work the next area. The next area? Okay, Iki, we're going to go on ahead. 
I came to see the rumored ghost, the one scaring everyone. So did we. And look at that, we actually do have a new fight. So let's get to it. Alright, so... This fight right here is actually a rather strange one, let's say. So, let's see... About tactics. I think it's best if I just go over the enemy itself. But for now I'll just use scout and maybe press. So the enemy here, Floro, and we have two of them. A rather interesting metabot. So the head part is beam, we've seen it before. And this one actually has quite a low rate of success, so it's entirely possible to dodge it. And keep in mind that it only has two uses. But more important than that, look at both arms. Go up and rise up. So these are the two parts that I was talking about when I referred to the rabbit metal. These parts are of the time skill, meaning that technically they do get the compatibility bonus for for the rabbit metal. However, their ability is called Axel Charge, and it makes it so the charge and radiation speed is increased simply by having this equipped. So they don't really perform a function in the sense that they don't have an attack or an action that they take once they reach the center. They just give you a passive speed boost by having it equipped. Which explains why Floro is so incredibly fast. Here's the issue though. They only have 4 attacks in total. They can, they can only use their head beam twice. So after they attack 4 times, assuming that you haven't lost yet and you haven't locked the metaphors, then the battle is over and you have virtually won. And there we go. I believe that was the fourth beam. So at this point we have one. We might as well just um, let's see charge metaphors, I guess. So once they run out of, of all of their beam attacks, they will simply just keep charging metaphors until they die, because they can't use the metaphors at this point. One final thing to add, I guess, is that they also have a multi-legged leg type. So if you're looking for that particular kind of leg, you may want to get it from them. But yeah, at this point the battle is over. And this battle can be rather long, so... I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to just skip to once I'm finished. Trust me, you're not missing anything particularly exciting. So I will just see you guys in a moment. Welcome back! Trust me, you didn't miss much. And we got stem up. That's nice and the Kubagara metal level up. I heard that there's a hag living in the mountain, but I don't believe it. Interesting. Alright, here. How do I explain this? So, believe it or not, this point is a very important point in the story, because in the game there are two big side quests. Side quests which are completely optional, and if you perform them properly, if you follow the rules for the side quests, you will be granted a medal at the very end of the game. These two side quests are mutually exclusive, meaning that you can only do one of one of each, one of them. You can't do both in a single playthrough. And they are called the Cat Medal and Mystery or Question Mark Medal respectively. Though you can also call them the Erika and Karin Medal. Basically, throughout the story, there are a few certain points in which you can perform different actions that will give you affinity towards either Erika or Karin. Recommendation. If you select one of them, stick with it. Because if, let's say that you start and you perform a few actions that give you affinity towards Erika, but then midway you change for Karin, then in the end you will get nothing. So, pick a side and stick with it. As for the medals themselves, let's... Actually, before that. So, this is why I actually wanted to do a, a playthrough, a let's play of both games. That way I can just cover both side quests. So, for the Rokusho version, we will be doing the Karin part of the side quest. And for the Metabi version, we will be doing the Erika side. Anyway, let's go over the medals first. First off, we have the Cat Medal. This is the reward for completing the Erika side quest. It has affinity for no particular skill at all, meaning that you will not get a compatibility bonus. Don't worry though, that doesn't mean that the metal isn't good. It will aim for defend parts. When it comes to skills, sorry, attributes, it has high values in Berserk and Aim Shot, 
mid values in strike and shoot and then low values in everything else. It will not have a zero value in any skill. So you can you have a, a certain range of freedom as to what you want to do with this particular metal. As for the meta forces themselves, first off we have total recovery. It requires 60 out of 80 meta force. It is of the heal attribute and it will repair all damage parts on your side of the field, so quite a nifty ability. Up next we have anti-attack trap. It requires also 60 out of 80. It is of the defend attribute and it will deploy a trap that deals damage anytime the opponent attacks. So it covers both long range and short range attacks. So it's an incredibly useful ability, trust me. Up next we have dice attack. It also requires 60 metaphors and it is of the interrupt attribute. And it will deal damage based on the number that is rolled on the dice. So that's, it's okay, it's a bit of a random element adding to the metaphors, but that's fine. Anyways, on to the mystery metal, or question mark metal, however you want to call it. It also doesn't have a affinity. It will also aim for heal parts. As for attributes, it has low value in all attributes. Next, we have the metaphors. First off, we have full body repair. It requires 70 out of 80 metaphors. It is of the heal attribute and it restores all broken parts on your side of the field. So, incredibly useful ability, needless to say. Up next, we have Destroyer. It requires the same amount of metaphors. It is of the Berserk ability attribute and it destroys one meta part on each enemy that is facing away from you, meaning that they are on the radiation phase. And then finally, we have Protector. It requires 50 out of 80 metaphors and it is of the defend attribute and it makes it possible to counter enemy attacks while you are defending them. So occasionally if you're using a defense skill after you have triggered these metaphors you should be able to counter the attack. So it doesn't always work but when it does trust me it is quite devastating. So yeah, anyways, how what do we do here if we want to follow the Karin side quest? Quite simple, simply talk to Karin I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I get pretty dizzy out on sunny days. I get all woozy and feel like I'll faint, so I have to rest here. Not just once, but enough times. You'll see in a moment. Don't worry about me, I'll be okay. I just need to rest a little. I is there something on my face, or...? It looked like Erika wanted to say something just before. Iki! Are you just going to hang out with girls all day, or are you going to actually help? Get to work! Alright, so if you talk to Karin enough times that Erika, that Erika actually gets mad, that is a sign that you have started the Karin side quest. After that, simply talk to Koji once. Leave Karin alone, she's resting right now. Alright, after we've done that, we just get interrupted by the old man. I'm getting tired of this fight, so I'm going to just show you what happens when you use a rubber rubber metal. Anyways. If we walk all the way up here, there we go. Hey Iki, we should go to Odoro Marsh next. Are we done here? Nothing is showing up here, so let's get going. Wow Erika, you sure are fired up about this. What did you say? N nothing, let's go. Alright, so that is what you have to do for the um, Karin side quest. For the Erika side quest, simply talk to Koji, but do not talk to Karin at all. Or if you do, only do it once. And then just walk all the way up here and you should get pretty much the same line of dialogue. So for the remainder of this episode we're going to stick with the Rokusho version. Let's just head all the way back to the center of the area and then that'll be all for now. And look at that, we actually did run into a new enemy. Though luckily it's a 2 on 1, so we have the number advantage. Let's see here. Alright, so this enemy. Um, I guess I would say if you're playing the Rakusho version, start with Scout and then simply use Pipo Hammer. As for Metabi, maybe just stick with Missile. But the enemy itself, Poison Copy. It is an interesting one, I guess. So its head as well as both arms have the same skill, Flow, which can inflict Melt, which I believe we talked about last time. It is pretty much a status effect that works like Poison or Fire Damage. Anytime the metabot is moving, either during the charge or radiation phase, it will take some minor amount of damage. Though the amount of damage will never be enough to fully destroy a part. What do I mean by this? 
it will always leave a Metabot with exactly one point of armor. So you actually do have to attack it in, only, in, in order to destroy it. So you can't... Don't expect a Metabot to simply destroy itself by burning down. You have to actually hit it once, otherwise it will simply have a value of 1 in all parts. Aside from that, I guess if I were to recommend a part, it would be the Scorpion Rat Arm. And it also has a multi-legged legs, so that's also nice. Other than that, not much else to say, really. I do have to say though, Press has been rather useful this fight. Right, hopefully we can just take him out with the Pipo Hammer here. And there we go. And we got Scorpion Rat. Nice. And our metal level up. Also very nice. Right, so we're supposed to go right there. The area that connects to that bridge. But I think we'll leave that for next time. But before we leave, there's actually two more enemies that we didn't run into here. And you actually fight them in conjunction. So I'm going to go over both of them right now. The first one is called Octoclam. So it also, similar to Poison Copy, is a multi-legged metabot that actually can inflict a specific status ailment. The status ailment in question is Hold, which will, it will slow down an enemy movement and the duration of it varies. And if I were to, I guess, recommend a part, it would be the Twist Arm, because it has chain damage. And the effect can be rather nifty. Aside from that, Octoclam will always ap appear accompanied by Sharkhan. It is a C-type metabot, actually. And it has the gravity ability in the head part. Actually, it has the gravity ability in all parts, so that's pretty much all to say about it. If you're looking for a, a C leg, uh, you can go for Smacker, it's actually a decent leg. But other than that, not much else to say, really. So yeah, those are all the enemies that we can encounter in this particular section of Mount Otoro. Next time, we'll head to Otoro Marsh and hopefully uncover more information regarding the, um, the ghost. See you guys!